Okay. All right. This is the uh, May 28th meeting of the Conway Select Board. Uh, we are being videotaped by the Frontier Community Access Television, FCAT, for viewing by our residents and the public at a later time. First item on the agenda is the minutes for the May 13th meeting. Everybody review the minutes. They look great. Okay. Phil? Yes, yes. All set? Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve those minutes for the uh, May 13th meeting. Oh. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Yes. Okay. okay. We've got three warrants tonight. We have a vendor minute. warrant. We have two minutes, minutes, right? Two more. Another minute. Um, From Friday. May 17th. Yeah. Oh, here we go. No, it's not listed on the agenda. No. Oh. Can we approve uh, it if it's not on the agenda? I don't. I don't think it's 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 administrative. Okay. okay we have uh, the minutes for <coughs> the May seventeenth meeting, which was essentially um, a meeting where we uh, uh, gave out scholarship money from the Germain Trust. Um, has everybody reviewed those minutes? Yeah, those are good. Okay, all set with those minutes? Yeah. Yep. All right. Make a motion that we approve the minutes for uh, May 17th. Do I have a second? Yep. All in favor? Yep. Aye. Okay. We've got uh, three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $200,690, uh, a payroll warrant for $121,548, and a payroll deduction warrant of $30,153. I'll make a motion that we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Phil. Yeah, the, uh, well, the Tuesday um, of Ginny's, the day of Ginny's party, I was not there because I was doing the IA Union 38 um, uh, negotiations, and we were able to conclude that evening with a TA, a tentative agreement with that union. So we're three down, one to go, of which I've been urged not to say anything derogatory towards whatsoever. So that's my report. Sounds like fun. Someone who knew you might do that. Uh, one of the other selectmen uh, uh, on the thing has been uh, the subject of complaints because of uh, comments that he made during a select board meeting. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, we got to watch our comments. Wasn't me, though. <laughs> no. That's no, just because I don't either. think they ever watched. <laughs> Robert. Robert. Uh, so well, we had an FCAT meeting last week. Uh, basically, we approved the budget. And the only really interesting news about FCAT, I mean, other than you guys are doing a great job, I'm not saying, you know, it's, it's all wonderful. But, but it's, the FCC is in the process of looking at wanting to, wanting to clarify, not change, they're saying clarify the rules under costs that they incur on the part of community television stations and their ability to, to deduct those costs from the money that Comcast, in our case, is providing to run the station. And, and they can charge um, virtually whatever they want. I mean, they, you know, in other words, they're off, they offer services to the t television studio, like providing us a channel. We have three channels on Comcast. What are those channels worth? They can charge us what they decide is the market rate for those channels. Oh boy! Um, they can charge us for the cost of any uh, uh, fiber optic lines they've put up. They can charge us for, um, you know, services that they provide to us that we sort of just sort of consider the way we work with them. And if they do that, then we will not get any money to run FCAT, and that'll be the end of it. And this, this FCC clarification began close to a year ago. Conway wrote, if you remember, we wrote a letter to the FCC, mm -hmm. along with all of the other towns, I believe, along with FCAT itself. Mm -hmm. um, and the process is taking a long time, and, 
at every step, it looks more like it will happen. And w when we wrote that letter, we had great hopes that it wouldn't happen. Glad it's just a clarification of it then, instead of just really changing that, something. Yeah, right. I just, mean, just Orwellian right. nonsense. Right. So anyway, that's that's the scary thing having to do with FCAT, and and. For many people, it's you know, it's in a way, it's not the three stations that are the problem, but m most of people, most people watch FCAT through our video on demand. Sure, they go to their computer, they watch, mm -hmm. and um, and so what would happen if we told Comcast we didn't want to have those stations and we did everything by video on demand? Maybe we they would not be able to charge us for that. Or I don't know. You know, mm. at some point we may have to figure out a way to try to keep FCAT alive, mm. but we're not there yet. And, and we've been running FCAT extremely frugally, and we have you know, enough money to keep it going. If, all, if our income were to stop immediately, we could keep going for a little while, but mm -hmm. not for too long. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, and Friday we had a scholarship meeting, and, and you missed a nice party for Jenny. So. I was there in the very tail end. Nobody left but Kenny and, and uh, Cindy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a very nice get-together. Uh, pizza was yeah. excellent. It was very cold by the time I got there. <laughs> America's favorite breakfast. Not mine. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, aside from Ginny's get-together, I did not have anything uh, last week. Great. Please, come okay. in and sit down. Okay. Uh, public comments. I don't see any of the public here, so I will assume there are no public comments. Old business. Okay, the Guilford Fund. Request for funds. Discussion on options uh, for the Guilford Fund loan disbursements. Um, yeah. Suggestions? I don't, I don't need that there, know that there needs to be any discussion. I just wanted to make clear after a discussion I had with Jan that... Um, there are various ways that disbursements can happen, and you have that those, those notes. And I just uh, encourage you to consider uh, all options and make the ones that you think are most appropriate for the circumstances. Suggestions? Well, we had the, the the suggestion that briefly came up in conversation at the last meeting, the the propriety of taking back the right of way, and that that. For the, the highway committee has said of all the right of ways going through the, the parcel, it's uh, that one in particular that they would most like to get rid of. Mm -hmm. And um, that I think you call the course trading. We, but, and, and but we, we would, I, I'm not you know, sure that that would not be considered a real estate transaction. That we would need know. to discuss in an executive session. Well, uh, um, that may or may not be but, a, but just, a reason. But, but just for this initial... Yeah. Disbursement? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think you're have fine. You, have you seen the, the three options? Uh, what What do you like? Well, we chose one for the, for the last disbursement, right? I mean, we and chose an outright grant, and um, so because options are open for further disbursements, I thought it was. I, and so I thought this was yeah. excellent. Um, I, I do wonder if we were to talk about this, would that be executive session? To speak generally, to speak generally about it. No, about it no, because not, not even the disbursement of the funds is an executive session. I, I think the most prudent way for us to go is option two. For well, the we don't have a request on the table right now. We don't. Yeah, no, no we don't. Right, right. No, we have not gotten the, the, the form back, the application. Oh. We still haven't gotten the application back for the initial disbursement? Oh, for the initial yeah, disbursement, we did. Yeah, we've okay. done that. That's okay. that, That's done. That's yeah. that's yeah. gone. But for future disbursements, yeah, we're looking for some. There sort are. Of, yeah. There there may be depending on the circumstances. There there might be one that came along that was grant worthy. There might be others that you might want to treat differently. So so there's a, a, a range of options to consider. There may be more. This is just an initial piece to to get people thinking. Mm -hmm. But I yeah I think. Um, a anything having to do with real estate could well involve a a actually a town meeting vote. So Are that might be getting ahead. Have a right of way? That, it's uh, not a, a right of way property. is an interest in real property. Yes, it is. Yeah. So I, I and I and I don't know. Uh, I'd have to research. Yeah, let, let's let's uh, that, but leave that for right now. Yeah. All anyway, right. So thanks, we'll, for, thanks for doing this. Yeah. It, 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 we, we sort of touched on this and said, "Gee, are there alternatives?" And and th this is what we were looking for. So this, yeah. Th this yeah. is great. 
as a side piece to that, one of the things we are always watching for in our deed research is rights of way that currently do exist. Even though they may not have been included in recent deeds or for decades, there are still rights of way out there, both public and private. That are undocumented? Mm-hmm. Are they just word of mouth? No, no, neighbor, no, they were neighbor, documented or? at one point. Hmm. But at some point, someone dropped it from the next deed. Mm. Title companies get sloppy, too. Oh, yes. Yeah. And even yeah. though it's been dropped from the description, it has not disappeared. It has no. not lost not its all. impact uh, hmm. until it is specifically uh, released by the current owner of the property. Yeah. So we've come across a couple of old ones that huh. still impacted a property. Hmm. Baptist Hill, everybody has more, oh, yes. more rights than everybody else. Yes. Uh, how do oh, people yes. learn about that? Uh, uh, if you're lucky, the title a title company does a good job, but you do have to go yeah, and research yeah. it and mm -hmm. work your deeds back to the origination of the town and see if any have been added at any point along the way. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. they might be accesses across your field. You know, who knows? Good way to find out where the natural springs on your property used to be. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the water rights. Yeah. 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 All right, next item on the agenda. The assessors to sign the Nexamp agreement. Well, you would be doing the signing, not we. Yeah. <laughs> now, you've received the letter. Yeah. So it was your consultant that, that said 13.5 is a good number? Yes. It, it sounded like it was right within the range of it, it is. surrounding Very towns. nicely within the range of, of Western Mass, you yeah. know, from Worcester yeah. West, I should say. And the um, considerations that are taken into account are the fluidity of that market, the changeovers from the prior program to the now the smart electric program, how many are getting into it, you know, and therefore the time period before you can actually go online, things like that, as well as what the um, Nexamp in this case wants, but the purpose of a pilot is not to give anyone a break. It is simply to make the payment of just taxes more convenient because they are predictable. Mm -hmm. right. pilot, term, pilot agreement lays out the terms, what the amount will be each year, but it reflects full and fair taxable value. So. Now, will their rated capacity change over time? Probably not once it's actually built. They're still, I believe, working on the exact size of the final arrays mm -hmm. and all that, so we don't have the final figures. <coughs> but this but is this certainly is, in the ballpark this for is, other projects. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And this They're is also. They're going to be meeting with the Conservation Commission. Uh huh. Tonight. Oh, that's what's on for tonight. And and I assume at that point you will know the final figures. That will be but great. We think that they think it's all agreed. Good. Yeah, Good. Absolutely. Because then next amp will be able to give us an absolutely final determination of kilowatt hours. Yeah. So I mean I have some questions about the process that you went through and how you got to this point. Good. Mm -hmm. My my understanding and I'm sure it's flawed and erroneous, but you'll let me know for <laughs> sure. But um was that the the September um, uh, town meeting where this was on the warrant. Yes. That what you were gonna do um, and I'm paraphrasing and exaggerating probably both, but uh, w was that you were going to do sort of a separate analysis of what it would be in the normal stream of taxation mm -hmm. and then versus a pilot program and that you had um, a consultant or whatever that yes. is whatever that, that uh, because to, to determine like things like uh, the taxation 19 years in the future is a fair amount of economic uh, projections about mm -hmm. because ta whatever and, and so I like where did was there ever any numbers generated with what it would be for like through regular taxation yes that was what was in the letter that was I, a I part would, of what's in the letter I also have spreadsheets that our consultant yeah. provided basically you have it right on the nose and this, this is what the consultant did was to look at the projections uh, at any devaluation over time because of degradation of the panels, anything like that, and um, 
if the panels were to be replaced at some point, maybe we'd come back and, you know, readdress. But we have the spreadsheets <coughs> that... This is what it would be worth. And so that's what you base the pilot on? Yes. Yes. So you do. So so they they go hand in hand rather they than do. one for one. They do. This the is other. this is one one sheet where the project size of six point zero megawatts and the estimated project cost, the the cost of the actual array, um, the annual production are all put into a formula to come up with a value per year. Some of the tax load. You know, we had this available. This is the, this one includes, uh, well, it recognizes the SREX that no longer exist. Um, generation price. And then we have another one that works with us is to, to determine the value of the land under it. Mm -hmm. Because whatever acres are uh, underlying the project and its access road will be valued at a much higher rate than our normal land value. Um, that will be taxed directly to the owners, that portion of it. But uh, this is what the consultant does. And the consultant in this case is working on probably anywhere between four and eight other towns at the same time, and so very much keeping in, up with the entire industry and what's going on in different towns. Um, he gave us the figures for Williamsburg, Blanford, West Hampton. Mm -hmm. um, Mm, yeah. So, I mean, I, I mean, I was kind of confused when I looked at this because I th I saw the average annual tax eighty seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars on the one, and then instead we're looking at a pilot of fourteen thousand per megawatt per per megawatt. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah, per megawatt. Yeah, so 14 times 6 brings That's, up in the 80s. So the question is how many megawatts are there exactly? Uh, yes. Which, that depends upon, which we don't know right. yet, which depends upon, you know, that's what the Conservation Commission has been negotiating over mm -hmm. how close they can get to wetland areas and buffer zones and all of that. And yeah. But it's a fixed cost now per megawatt according yes. to this yes. negotiated right. agreement. Yes, it is. Now this will be sent to NextSAM mm -hmm. from you. Yeah. And um, they will continue to negotiate uh, through Roy with you, you know. Naturally, they would like a much lower value per megawatt. Oh, sure. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> it's called a negotiation, but this certainly is a well-founded... Will well -founded this be the first time they see this number? Yes. Yes. They've been having discussions back and forth. Um, Roy Bishop, our consultant and Ethan Giles on behalf of Next yeah, yeah. They've been requesting and sending information back and forth. They, Very, they, you know, detailed uh, industrial information yeah. to help support the figures that are coming out here. They, they've done a bunch of projects in Massachusetts. So, yeah. so oh, they've yeah. got these oh, yeah. numbers. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, is there a difference in the, the, with, the, with the pilot approach they, the, the payments escalate over time with the taxation one, they decrease over time? Is that general? The, the, the taxation one could decrease over time, yes, probably would. And he gave us a, an overview of that as well. The difficulty of that is that we would have to revalue it every single year. And go through this entire process, see what market uh, factors may have affected it within that past year. Hire a consultant again to do that revaluation for us. And that becomes prohibitively expensive and it gives the uh, Nexamp people no definite um, indication of what to expect in future years. This, this basically is talking to what we feel is the is the highest production, the highest production of value, and therefore we're asking for top dollar, and we're willing to spread it out equally over 20 years as a um, convenience for them and for us. Yep, it gives us a nice predictable figure every year that we know, 
as opposed to saying one year, okay, uh, we don't know what it's going to be next year, you know, but Roy has been able to work those figures in by looking at his long time, his long time figures. He's been doing this for 12 or 14 years. So then, but then, so the, the time value of the money, then the utility gets the benefit of instead of the town. Because if it, no, payments, were, but, front, if payments but, were front loaded, the, the time value of the money, interest, what, whatnot, right. would accrue to the town. If they're back loaded, then yeah, the that's, utility that's all, gets the money. It's all been built into yeah. those figures. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's in the, uh, it is in the, yeah, it is built into the approach. Not the cost approach, but the income approach. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a capitalization factor that's built in there. That would if this had been built in money. Conway five years ago, we would be looking at a, at a higher number than yes. 13.5. Probably 2022. 20, it could have been, yes. Because back then, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, under the SREC 2 program, yep. the state was more generous in the incentive payments that they provided to the solar company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And under, but Conway wasn't <laughs> and we didn't, a prime you know, candidate that they knew about. <clears throat> Well, this was, this was their choice to come here. I mean, That's right. they, they could have come here five years ago. But, yeah. Um, I think they were still looking at the flat land then. <laughs> and, and they were building them in eastern Massachusetts. Right. Right. And now they're reaching out. Yeah. Yeah. So under the SMART program, these payments are going to be less mm -hmm. because the state incentive payments are significantly less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they and also it, don't get the and in, in case of default, is there a difference in the way that the law treats defaulted pilot payments versus defaulted tax payments? I believe not. It is assessed Cheers. and billed through the usual system, and therefore it has the protections of the usual system, I believe. That should be covered in this uh, guideline that I handed out to you. So what are you asking for us today? I'm asking if you feel that this letter is appropriate to sign and send on to next amp at this time. If you'd like, like more information, more questions, let's write them down. I'll get you the answers. You've been working on this for quite a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the next step is for them to get back, for them to respond to this mm -hmm. offer. Exactly. Yes. And, exactly. Um, Through Roy. And and yeah. we may. We'll be working. Yeah. Okay. This is the this is the first shot in the negotiation. Exactly. So the fact that we don't know the exact number for megawatts is okay. I mean, it is at is, the moment. This is thirteen five per megawatt. That's right. And, and That's right. That's the, what we're determining. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that my thoughts would be to hold very very strongly to that. Great. Based on what's happening in other towns around us. I think that's a um, fair and equitable within the industry and within the region. Take it or leave it. It's a pretty tough way to I approach know. these things. I know. You're a tough, tough, tough person. <laughs> well, there may need to be some, you know. Fisticuffs. You know, based on the work that our assessors Come have on. done, and certainly the work that the consultant has done, you know, I, I make a motion that we, we sign this letter. Do I have a second? I'd second it. You're all in favor. I'll, I'll say aye, and then I'll then the senior <coughs> call here. But is it unanimous, sir? Um, uh, yeah, I guess so. Okay. I can still get any questions answered. I, this I, is not I, I the like end having, of the process. I like having final numbers just so I know precisely what it is. I'm so this is the final this, number. This, yeah, thirteen five. That's the final yeah. number. Is a final number. Or it's the final yeah, number for this for this particular there's document. Still, there still involves further mathematics to get to the final number. It, yes, it will. Well, we, we don't know yeah. based on Kong Kong. how much they're going to build. And yeah, we, and we're, yeah right. based on Kong Kong and so forth. Right. It's, it's uh, an absolute dollar figure is unpredictable. It is is predictable within a certain range probably at this point. But uh, this was more solid than I had thought when I was reading this. So that oh, good. Just shows how good, good. The print's really small, though. When you look at well, you should have seen the, the thing. Really I know. Small. And I tried to chop it up and put, there you know, goes. parts under it, and then no the parts that piled up the, uh, 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 piled up the cell vent. Magnifying glass. Here on in, could you do a large print? I will. I'll try. <laughs> yes, I'll bring him a magnifying glass. 
<laughs> I'll go to the dollar store and get him some of those 2.0s. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. All right. So, okay. So this will go from here to uh, Roy Bishop. Mm-hmm. Great. And he will contact Ethan Giles. And I won't say anything to Nexamp about this at the uh, concert. No, no. Don't say anything. <laughs> you say we've signed yeah. the letter? Say, get ready. The demand for 14. <laughs> the demand for 14 is coming. Well... And then they'll be um, happy. Then they'll be happy when they open it and see this. Nice. Before you send it away, and of course, you copy. Yep, I'll we'll do it right now. Okay, that's fine. Yep, okay. That'd be great. Lisa, may I ask you? Oh no, you're on duty. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sometime. I'll go in. Yeah, I'll do it first thing in the morning. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here, why don't you take my three? Thank you, Lee. You need to take your chair in over here if you want. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got no. two. Yeah. Oh, these are two copies. Yeah, yeah, this is the. This yeah. is the. And, there, and there's a comfy one right over there. And we have yeah, that one's far better. We only okay, need, good. We only need uh, Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I want to make sure everybody had one that wanted one. Thank you, Lee. Thank, Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Yep. It's nice to feel some uh, additional forward motion on this. Take the Yeah. It's been. It's been. These things do take. Well, and it, it's gentlemen. Wasn't it nice? It is gentlemen. It won't happen right away until they get That's approved right. for additional capacity. That's and right. So that could be on hold for six months. We don't. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah. All these kind of projects are on hold. But this important phase of it is um, for us is pretty well finished. Sure. Now we yeah. Yeah. Iron out the title details. And next hand's mission is to be ready to go as soon as the yes. capacity frees yes. up. Yes. Yep. Good. Thank you all. Thank you guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. All right. Next item, uh, we need to revoke. The vote to transfer 4100 from town clerk salary wages to town clerk operations. Tom? Yeah, our uh, personnel committee uh, lawyer said, uh, pointed out that Jenny would not meet the three to five prong test of being an independent contractor and so would have to be an employee. And so I erred in putting it in the operations line. E either a select board or finance committee vote to revoke the agreement makes it invalid because it takes both to to agree to it. Uh, I'm still working on options. I have a couple of options mm -hmm. for uh, dealing with fiscal year 2020. All right. So we're just taking money from one account and putting and, it in another. That's and, all. And, okay. and, 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 well, yeah. And now we're not taking it. For, well, right now yeah, we're not we're, taking we're it. We're putting yeah. it back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. Um, yeah. and uh, we'll, we'll be back. Uh, I'll be back uh, sometime I hope before June 30th with the mm -hmm. plan for FY 2020. Yeah. Okay. So I, I would, you know, I, when I saw the the letter from you asked to us about this, that was the first that I had heard that the plan was to pay her um, fifty dollars per hour as a consultant fee, and I wonder, you know, this is, that was like the three different times and you told us all about that, and that 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 that, that fact had always escaped discussion. Um, and, I, and I thought that was a pretty important fact. I, I, to me, that's just public policy granting someone a pay raise the day of their retirement just doesn't seem like the way to go. Um, and I, I don't, I don't understand why. So what, why? How did it come to be that much? How well, I, I certainly point? think she's worth that as a consultant, that's and not because the that's what we had agreed to, um, I don't think it's fair to lower that rate at this point. I, and it is limited, of course. It is limited, you know, to this forty-one hundred and to the ten thousand next year. So it's not as though she can. She's, you know, there's a open pocketbook here. Yeah, I mean, I. And maybe I get, that she you know, doesn't even use it all up, depending on how much Lori actually needs her. This is all at the request of the current town clerk as well. So she's she'll be well aware. You know, I, I get all. I have no crit, no criticism of the individual in particular, or the work, or the worth, or anything like that. It's just the concept of giving someone a pay raise on the day of their retirement to keep doing their job just seems to me to be uh, not the way we want to go as a town government. That's all. But it's yeah, not their job. You know, not they're doing a different job. It is is the is the amount the problem that you're thinking of. Yeah, I mean, what I, to to me, what 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 the what the rate was upon retirement shouldn't be exceeded on retirement. Ginny's Ginny's rate was probably 
quite a bit below the market when she retired. You know, we tried to get her up to a, to a market rate. I think, um, I think you'll be seeing a request for more hours, at least, from the uh, new town clerk. And when that happens, and and, and uh, probably and perhaps uh, rate as well. You know, I just I just did some landscaping to clean up the yard. Fifty two bucks an hour. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna open a landscaping business. Yeah. Uh, so trust, trust you know. me, trust me. Your back will your back will thank you for not doing so. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, it sounds like a lot, but it, I don't think it is, especially on a limited basis. Um, I, I think that we should have had we should have disclosed this all along that when we talked about it at the town meeting we should have disclosed it we disclosed the cost the overall cost but we should have disclosed what what the plan entailed my fault for not asking this specific detailed question I suppose but um, well that's what she was going to ask and now that it and now that she can't ask it as a consultant it's a and I just don't think it's fair to uh, knowing what she was going to ask to reduce that at this time. Yeah, I wouldn't have a problem doing that. Um. <laughs> All right, so we're transferring this. We're going to revoke that vote. I'll make a motion that we revoke the vote. Transfer 4100 from town clerk salary wages to town clerk operations. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. What we're doing is transferring it. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay. I know. Okay. I am powerless to prevent its occurrence anyway. <laughs> Every vote counts. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll abstain. Uh, okay. All right. Next item on the agenda, we need to elect a chair and a secretary. Any suggestions? Nominations. Um, so I'll nominate John. I think you do a good job as chair. And... Uh, Do you have a second? Is there a second? Or another nomination? Or, um, yeah, I think we should change this sort of thing up, just as a rule. That we, Do you have a nomination? You're, you're, you have seniority. I would nominate you. Is there a second? Well, did we, did we did we have a second on the first nomination? I didn't yes. hear it. Yes. Yeah. Bob seconded. Oh no. Bob, no. No. Oh, you didn't. No. You didn't second. Oh, okay. I'll second. So we have to second each other. So, so what what will happen now? I, I, anyway. Well, we, we have two nominations on the floor. If you seconded your own nomination, um, then that has a second. Bill's nomination does not yet have a second. Well, I'll second. So I'll second whatever, but now now we'll have tie votes or something. So I, I have I have no idea what happens. I, well, you take the vote. Um, uh, the the motion that Bob made. If you were seconding that motion, that's on the floor now. And and the mo and Phil's motion would be out of order because, but you didn't second it before he made his nomination. You solicited it from me. You said any other nominations. <laughs> well, I answered your question. Yeah, I know. I know. Now I'm out of order for answering your question. No, no, I don't. You're I don't know. never out of well, order. Well, your meeting. <laughs> well, essentially, we need to vote on the first nomination, don't we? Okay. All right, I'll, I'll make a motion that we, we vote Bob's nomination. Do we have s You were nominated first. Right, yeah. 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 And whose motion did you second? Mm -hmm. he, he, he seconded my seconded nomination his, of him. Yeah, I seconded uh, although Bob's I, nomination. Yeah. In a way, I'm a little surprised you can second yourself, but okay. I, I guess that's okay. And then later you seconded okay. Phil's nomination. Mm -hmm. So your choice on how to proceed then, I guess. Well, shouldn't it go in the order that it was, that was opposed, right? Sounds reasonable. I don't have any objection to that. So 
So then the, um, the first motion was Bob's nomination of me that was seconded by me? Yes. That was the first nomination. Do we have a vote on that? I'll say aye. I'll say aye. I'll say no. I guess that passes. It does. Okay. So you're now stuck we, with it for another year, John. Now we have to. Thank you, Bob. Now we <laughs> have to. Now we, now we have to nominate a uh, a clerk or a secretary. Are we calling it a secretary or a clerk? I don't care. Now is this one of us? And and, and really, really, we we've, we've slacked off on it on on the administrative end. But really, that yeah. person should be reviewing and signing off on the minutes. Mm -hmm. That's really and, the function of that. And it's the clerk position. I'll, I'll nominate Bob. Who, I have a second. Who is current clerk? I'll second it. All right. We have a vote. Sure. I'll vote aye. aye. Okay. Sure. And and we'll we'll make sure that you uh, sign off on the minutes. Okay. It will nominally be submitted by you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lisa. <laughs> All right. Next item on the agenda. We have a poll hearing. 6.30 poll hearing. Are we at 6.30 yet? Okay. Yes, we are. Okay. Poll hearing. Eversource. What do we got? Good evening. All right. Select board. If you're here for this, come on up. Nice to meet you folks. Did we nice. get your How name? How you doing? You, uh, nice to meet your asked. name, yeah. No, I yeah. couldn't get over here. And what's your name? Your name is in Carla. Uh, so, John Carla, Carla, Carla all has know. moved on to a different department. And, uh, <laughs> really? She was only here a little while. So. Yeah. So now you have a new smiling face. Okay, so according to this, all you guys do is want to put a poll in here to support the poll across the street. Sure. So, so currently, the poll across the street is being held by a tree. Essentially, we have a tree guy. So there's a wire drilled into a tree across to the road. A, to a tree. Correct. Okay. And um, since we're going to be replacing the pole across the street, mm -hmm. um, we found it now's the best time to. Um, remedy that situation and remove the tree guy and just put a stub guy in there. Instead. So, so you're you're going to replace pole 32 slash 11. Correct. And then you're going to put in 32 slash 11 dash one across the street to, to support it instead of supporting it by a tree. Absolutely. Yep. Correct. Sounds so the reasonable. wire is still attached to the original pole. It's just this is just a supporting pole. Correct. Uh huh. Oh. Do you, have you seen this? Yeah, no, I haven't seen it, but I have yes. a problem with it. Is, sure, that, where, are you, are you is that where the white posts are put in the ground? Yes. That happens. Sit, sit down, John. Sit down. <laughs> Let us know what you think. But that field, it's about a five acre field there. Okay. And it has a post and rail fence, and you put the post right in the middle of the gate into the field. Oh, there's a gate there? Yeah, you know, it's a bar way. Okay. But it's my only way to get in and out of the field, to mow the field. And to get to the which, which, which are you talking about? So this is this the new pole there. Right? New pole. Yes. So that's, that's the red that's one. The red one. Yeah, the red it's, one. It's right in the middle. Of really? my gate, right in the middle of my gate. Have okay. they put the pole in already? No, they put wooden stakes. So it was just like a stakes. temporary stake, so we could uh, that would be have this like discussion for the tractor. <laughs> All right. So, do you want to move that? Oh yeah, absolutely. I didn't okay. see a gate there. Um, it's a barway, but it's a ten foot barway. Okay, I can go and, out there. This and it's weekend. my only yeah. entrance into the... Because my issue was, you know the stone fence there? If you go, I guess, north of the road? Um, I was having trouble getting clearance there because of the stone wall is kind of close to the road. And I wanted to make sure that we had enough room to anchor that. Mm -hmm. So I try to keep it as south as possible, not realizing that there was a gate there. So... Yeah. How far do you suggest we move that, Tony? I don't care as long as I can get through my gate. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, how much room do you need to get through your gate from where so it could be more five feet in one direction if it's a ten foot well, gate? Well, you're com I'm coming in with a tractor and a okay. And so, you, a so you need some so off track. Yeah, yeah. You need some. And off have a photo. And I hold whole firewood in it. I mean, I use it quite a bit. Yeah. All right. So, so how do you how do you want to move that red dot? North or south? It doesn't matter to me. No. How far do you want to move it? Well. Ten feet. Ten feet. Ten feet. Have a photo. So here's that 
they can see see that stake there see, so this gate opens up see yes. see those three there those are wider than the ones on the other those are uh, ten, ten I thought this was just a those fence. Are 10 foot rails on a far way okay I'd be, I can move that no problem so it's like three panels deep or so this way yeah I'll be able to see you'll that. be able to see because yeah. the post has double whole slots mm -hmm. in it one for the bar way and one for the <laughs> okay so you can see here um, I thought this was just a continuous fence, uh -huh. but he's telling me that, um, see those stakes? Those are the proposed pole location. Um, the gentleman is telling me that these, this part of the fence is actually a gate that opens up. Oh, okay. So to give him access there, I'm going to move this. Okay, so could you draw on that, on that map where you want to, where you want to move this? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. If, if you, if you, let's see, if you go to the north, there's an apple tree there. That, this tree. This tree. Would it be would it be better for you to for me to move it this way? Or this it, does, way? it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, it'd be better for me to move it up the road. Okay, this way. that's fine. Because that's closer to the pole. Yep. So, I would say we'll call it 15 feet to the south. And that'll just be to brace. Yep, pull so, across the street. Yep, so yeah. right now the tree. Glad I took photos. So that's the that's the that's the pole. Right. That's on do, my do, property. Do you also <laughs> you, you also have an interest in this? Yes, yes. it's uh -huh. my house. Now yeah. she just has more of an interest oh. in it. Yeah, we can all talk about this. It's okay. Yeah. So, so, so your house is the one that's actually marked on our picture, yeah. yeah and yeah. for it to be supported right now, there's a wire going from this pole yep. into a tree across the road. Yeah. And since we're going to be replacing this pole, we want to remove that tree guy because that's not really a good way to do things. Okay. Okay. No. So now to support it, we're going to put a new pole in. So while Ever it, well, was, go ahead. No, I was Jeez. just going to say, Eversource left a message on our machine saying that they were going to brace this one up on our property. That was the message we received quite some time ago. Hmm. So How that's long ago changed. Do you think? Well, it looks like they are now. So, like, no, they're bracing it on Tony's property they, across the street. So, like a push brace. So, like uh, it would look like this. Yeah. So, this is the pole on your property, and then there'd be like another pole, like here, to support it. That's what it sounded like, but they didn't go into a lot of detail. That's why I was surprised that there's going to be a pole on the other side of the street. Hmm. So, will the pole that's on my property still remain? Yep, there'll be a new pole on your property in the same location. Okay. Um, but it won't be supported like this. I'm not sure who gave you that information. Maybe that was like the first plan mm -hmm. and we've moved on to another plan and, you know, regrettably nobody informed you. Okay. But I think, um, you know, this is a better design, so this is the way we want to go. Mm -hmm. so it's is that okay with you? Then we can go to plan B. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Tony, that's okay with that's you. Fine. That. Contingent that Ex on that I move the pole out of yeah. the gate. Now, while we're talking about bracing poles, uh, she had two big maples that went down, took the wires down, yes. and when it did that, it put a lot of strain on the poles on down the road. Yeah. And there's the pole at the bottom of the hill. The wire goes from that across my field. Six notes. Okay. And there are two brace wires that go from that pole across the road, across my field, across the stream, and into a tree. And the, the force of that coming down pulled the tree over. Yeah. And the wires dropped down into my field. And I spoke to them when they were replacing because I have horses in that field and the wire is about the four feet off the ground. How long ago would you say this was? When did that happen? More. Uh, it was March, snow April? on the ground, so yeah. yeah. March. It's called Probably this winter. March. Yeah, what this past winter. And so I was winter. concerned about mm -hmm. that, and I spoke to them when they were replacing it, when they were yeah, right. fixing the wire, but they did nothing about it. So I took one of the wires and put a clamp on it to hold it up so the horses won't hit it. But those brace wires are not bracing anything. The trees down dead and down and the wires need to be removed or rebraced. maybe you need to put a new pole in there yeah sure um i can go down there this weekend and look into that it's that pole right at the bottom of the hill where the the wire then cross turns and goes across the hayfield I'm not familiar um off the top of my head but i can look into it well, is, that, is this on your property yeah it's what's on your address 
two, three, four main pole and road. Google, Google Earth. Oh, here we go. Google Earth shall illustrate for you. Okay. Um, let's see. Where is the? Um, this is. Where is two eighty three? Just because I know that location. This is two eighty three, right here. Right here. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there's a pole here. There's a pole. Okay. Yep. Here. I recognize this now. There's a pole here, and there's a pole right here. And then from here, the wire goes across the field like that. And this pole, the wires come across this field and went into a tree. That's the tree that went down when that, the trees. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can definitely check that out. When I go to move the stake, that's a good time. I can go out there and okay. I can write a ticket for someone to go replace that. They look a little higher now because I just pulled them up and <laughs> bolted them up. Didn't get electrocuted doing that. Well, they were brace wires. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> they weren't electric wires. Don't go, don't go touching the, <laughs> no, no, the power yeah. lines. Right. All right, so this configuration is okay with everyone? Yep. Okay. So you're going to go 15 feet south of this? Yes. Okay. Just to... Uh, and there's a new pole coming in here on your property. A replacement okay. pole, yes. A, re a replacement pole. Okay. And then these are going to be braced with a... With a this is going to support this pole. Correct. There'll be a wire going from this pole to this to that pole. pole. Right. And then this pole also has a wire that goes directly into the ground to support it. Right. And you're okay with that. Okay. All right. So based on the amendments to this uh, plan to uh, uh, remove the, the to to replace this pole and to put another pole in, I'll make a motion that we approve the pole hearing. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor. Okay. Okay. Can you tell me in the tree that came down on my property, um, who is responsible for getting rid of it? Is it Eversource? Is it the town? It was marked by the town for destruction mm. before it went. All right, we can. You can talk to Tom about that offline because okay. we're, we're yeah. it's not on the agenda the, right and now. The, and the two big trees best. went down and it created a big cavity. The and street. the road crew put some gravel in there, and they put in two cones, car orange cones, and they've been there for three months. Yeah, they have. All right, talk with talk with Tom, and he'll talk with uh, with Ron, and we'll we'll see what we can do. Okay. Well, right. despite all the trees that road crews have been taken down, the winds are still finding them. You know, it's the, the amount of tree work around town is amazing. Mm -hmm. On your you guys doing it, or and our road crew. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Yep, nice to meet you folks. Good we'll be you. working a lot, nice to meet you. a lot more together. Um, I do a lot of work here in Conway. Tony, so. good, good seeing you. Yeah, see you. Yeah, sure, nice nice seeing you. you. Take care. Good night. Oh, nice nice to, meet to meet you. If you have any questions, just call the office and uh, we can talk more about this. But uh, this looks like the way to go. I saw those stakes there, sir. Something new every day, huh? Yep. A lot of work going on in Conway. There is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like eight jobs in Conway. When you drive through Conway now, you hit one road crew after another. And then, and then there was a big tree down, what, last Friday, last yeah. Thursday or something, right down here? Uh, oh, nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Likewise. See ya. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I'll be seeing you guys Thank around. you very much. Thank you. Oh, man. Thanks. So you will see yourself live on, you know, not live, but you'll see on oh, FCAT Media, you can see our, watch our yeah. YouTube. board meeting Thanks. on YouTube. For now. For now. Yeah. Watch them while you can. Hi. Hi. All right. So we've yeah. got to, we've got to, we've got to sign this from our source. Yeah. Um, okay. <coughs> All right. Well, you know what? We got. We can have to annotate this. Do you want to modify this, Tom? Or, or what are we? How much do we have to change it? I just. It, they made it this, out for this the planning board. So I just crossed yeah. that out and put select board. And yeah. Um. I'm just gonna. Annotating here. here say as agreed as, as amended. Yeah. As amended. Yeah. Uh, five twenty-eight nineteen. Yeah. That's good. What do they call this? 
pole hearing diagram? As amended on diagram. Yeah. yeah. To go approximately 15 feet south of its current location. Yep. Right. It has seemed like Eversource is willing to make things work. You know, they also seem to be doing more work around here than they have in the last six years. Forever, yes. I like it when the concerned neighbors show up, though, and cause yeah, oh, cause yeah. you always wonder if they, you know, do they care? How much, you know, whatever? Did they forget about it? Did, you know, and all this. You want them to be there. We needed you here five minutes ago, though. The lady who was just here was wondering if you're going to take care of a tree on her property that the wind took down. The main Poland Road, next to Tony Borden's. There's two cones. That was the question. So, so that was her question, yeah. Uh, first of the year. Now. Well, she said that you, you filled in the, the root ball where the root ball was with gravel and put a couple of cone, cones next to it. You want you want three signatures on this, right? Um, it, it's I was kind of waiting for her. <laughs> and there's you are whoever I'm not sure who owns the property. I don't know either. I don't know who she was. Did she, did we get her name? Yeah. Lisa Hebert. Okay, great. I didn't know who she was. Two twenty three Main Hall. Yeah. Two eighty three, right? No, two twenty three it looks like. Oh, two eighty three is time. Maybe it's an eight. Yeah. You, got, you might want to take a look at that. It's 283. I mean, okay. we, we had all, all of these documents here. Okay, yeah. I couldn't read it. 283. Yep. So let me introduce Deb Radway. Hello, Deb. Good evening. Pleasure. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks for coming. As long as um, Ms. Radway is here, let's move her up on the agenda. Anybody have any problems with that? No. Okay. Can we just sign two of these? Yeah, just two. One's okay. for us, one's for them. Uh, this is to assign the Regional Human uh, Resources Study Contract with Deb Radway uh, because we are the lead town. This is a Commonwealth Community Compact Grant. Right. Uh, submitted not under the Regionalization Grant, but under the Best Practices Grant uh, because that's what Sean Cronin told me to do. So, <laughs> I'm going to do Sean, it. Sean is, is very, do whatever Sean is very good that way. <laughs> yeah. So we're the lead town among who? These are the four <coughs> frontier towns and frontier um, nominally, though those school human resources issues are, are often quite different. Um, looking at various options for a shared human resources staff person. Uh, or function. Function, yeah. So nobody right now has a human resources person and our human resources functions uh, may be considered so, somewhat yes. um, vulnerable. Five, five, five separate employers for one employee with five separate uh, employee contribution rates towards health insurance for the four towns and frontier all of separate Benefits is carved out of this grant completely. Yeah. yeah. But um, it's a big reason why it's a big hurdle to like the towns working together with the school <laughs> on much of anything when employee co pays differ so so dramatically. Yeah, right now that's up to the treasurers to propose something if they want to. But uh, at at least the, the, the basic function um, is something that uh, Certainly, all of the four town administrators feel pretty keenly that that um, a none of us are human resources professionals. Uh, B none of us have the time that a human resource professional would devote to the job, and that this is a major area of town 
responsibility and therefore vulnerability if we don't do it right. Mm -hmm. So we've been feeling for a long time that this was one of the regions that we might be able to cooperate with um, within the Frontier District. And we got um, uh, fairly far along that um, uh, road with the last superintendent and now we have a new superintendent um, who seems um, much better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. Much, much better. No, couldn't more. agree more. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Tom. We all appreciate Darius. Um, we're, we're not sure whether something together with the schools is going to work. The, the issues are very different in the schools and in the towns. Uh, but we need to at least start looking at options and get some ideas for different ways it might be laid out and what what uh, functions need to be addressed. And so we'll just build on the policy. What kind of staff handbook? would that? It, not at this point. This is just a feasibility study to say what, how <clears throat> might a shared human resources function uh -huh. come into what, being. What you get is what the project scope says you're going to get. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the project scope is really limited. Um, and it only costs forty five hundred. This is true. You do get what you pay for, and there's no, no, and, and I, I, you know, and it's not right to, but but it doesn't. Um, there, you know, I looked at this and like, wow, I could answer these questions with like four phone calls in about an hour. And uh, I, I, enough to I, take it to four town meetings. So that's well, the, that's that's where this is heading. Okay. So, so, so this is going to establish all of the facts, lay them out, and everybody will be operating from the same set of information, same information, uh, and with any luck, we can get um, some result from this. Right now, again, um, the superintendent does not currently feel as though there is um, much overlap between the school and the towns. So this is written from the town point of view, not the school's point right. of view. Uh, well, I've, I've had discussions with him about this. Yeah. To try to... Um, but so it's staffing levels, functions, how that breaks down, uh, how that might look if they were based at the town, uh, you know, what town might be able to host, all of that sort of thing. But th that's an artificial look because you're not including benefits so you're just taking an artificial slice of that without really being able to look at the nitty gritty. Which Benefits is administration is done by the treasurers. Yeah, this, 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 this is not comes, about. This comes yes. to us through best practices from the state. So this, this is, you know, this is a first step. Doesn't cost the town anything, right? It's a grant. No. Yeah. It's grant. No. So <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. On, Mm -hmm. On that condition, I'm okay with it. I, I'm but okay I, uh, to be able just to offer some advice. Taking, spending a little bit of time in each of the four towns. What are the, What are you doing now? What are your recruiting practices? You know, what are your benefits that you offer with a zero percent unemployment rate, and you hire you know two people every five years? You want to make sure that you get the best two people you can get. Um, do you have any morale issues? Um, do you do performance reviews? Any of that stuff, just, and most of all, making sure that you're doing things legally. Mm -hmm. And it may be as simple as a recommendation for like, if you feel, yeah, you're big enough, you could hire a half-time person, maybe. And maybe that half-time person makes themselves available, phone a friend, cast the lifeline to the other three towns when they need it. You know, hey, do you guys have a policy on XYZ? Can we have a template? Or what do you do in the situation where you got an employee, where, we, where we, people want to bring families to work and you don't have a policy? Stuff like that that can get under people's skin. I can provide you with some guidance on how to address that in a way that you can afford, that would be my goal. Well, I just thought the role of the policy manual that you and... That's a huge the, step. The, 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 
Yeah. What, 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 resources what put you together. folks have just done is yeah. huge. And I don't know whether the other towns have anything like that. We, we, don't, we don't have Deep a policy for emotional support animals yet. Do we? <laughs> no, we don't. Okay. Or, One do of the have, things we need to, to look at. Right? So looking at what we have, you know, taking the inventory and, and seeing what needs to happen now, but also to maintain that function mm. over time in a way that makes the administrators, the people who were concerned enough to get this grant going forward comfortable, I think would be really, really good. Mm -hmm. And has everybody read this? Yes. Everybody's in agreement? Yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the contract um, or the agreement uh, to move forward with this study for uh, human resources. Uh, and since we're the lead town with uh, we're among Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley. Uh, we will sign the contract with Deb. Uh, and I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? Sure. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you much, Deb. I'm sure we'll get uh, yeah. we'll get many insights into uh, our situation here yeah. as far as human resources are concerned. Here's a, a clip to go with that. Okay. Well, we don't, we don't need to be clipped after this. We'll be unclipped. Yeah. Something in there somewhere. Still there. That one and that one. And then we're going to get our accountant signature too, actually. Yeah. Um, we're just standing there, whatever you want to do. Uh, so that's, oh uh, yeah. Thank you very much. I look forward to working with Tom and Thank you for coming in, Deb. Nice meeting you. Take care. Bye. See you. Ron, are you just here for the motion that we have to make to authorize you to? Uh, uh, that is that what you're here? The other for the roadway. Yeah, I don't think we're going to go over the. Uh, yeah, we're not going to go over that. The, the land question oh. tonight. Because uh, Joe hasn't. Because the highway committee is meeting Thursday, and Joe's going to discuss it with them. We're just going to authorize you to use uh, a number of parcels for equipment and material storage subject to for local, state, and federal laws or regulations that you're already using. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we're, we're going to make it official. Okay. Good. Is everybody read this? Yeah. It's very simple. Yes, yes. No, I... I yeah. D that's just for, you know. I'm surprised it wasn't already Well, done. there wasn't any, uh, there was no need for yeah, it. Well, yeah, great. Town, town function doing work on town on, property. On town property. It, it's I been know. happening for decades. We anyway. just want to clarify. Right. So, so, I mean, I just had some questions about that. Which it, it did, it was, did you run this past the lawyer? Because the, it was triggered by a letter from a citizen questioning the town's ability, the, the, whatever, and so is is a response. Is this being done in response to that fully appropriate and kosher and okay? Um, we're did, we're just clarifying a, a a an authority we already had. That's all. We're just we're just codifying and, and, a, and a current practice. Yeah, that, uh, you know, yeah, that's all. And it may help moving forward, but in any case, it'll be clear. That's the main thing. <clears throat> there is, in fact, a policy in place. Now, that would be helpful, certainly, to me. Any other questions? No. Okay. I'll make a motion that we authorize uh, the Conway Highway Department to use parcels um, 411 
411-008-002 and 411-008-003 for equipment and material storage subject to any local, state, or federal laws or regulations. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Is that two or one? Uh, no, that's two. That's two. Are you abstaining? No, or that's abstaining. two, so that's three. Well, well, two or three one. Or, it's so two or, or actually, none of those options were actually, so it was three. I see, okay. Yeah. We trust you will take good care of it, Ryan. Okay, next item is to um, appoint Michael Merritt. Uh, as a member of Parks, Recreation, Trails Committee, um, and he is going to be the soccer director. Mm -hmm. I'll vouch for him. He's he's outst an outstanding recruit. Uh, Michael's a good guy. He's yeah. been here for yeah. Yeah. other other yeah. reasons. Yeah. So based on on um, the recommendation of Parks, Recreation, and Trails, um, I'll, I'll move that we appoint Michael Merritt to serve uh, on that committee for a term ending uh, June 30th, 2020. Do I have a second? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. And there's the, the insurance thing, too. Make sure you don't skip that. For a while, Michael was on FCAS. That's the chub. Yeah. That's uh, we have several kinds of insurance. One of them is police and fire injured on duty insurance. This is something that's done in partnership with Maya, who is also in partnership with Habit Risk for workers' comp and chub for injured on duty. So. There are a string of cooperating insurance companies uh, involved. All right, so we just need to um, approve this. Yeah. Now. So was there? So was this the only? Uh, was this the only applicant to that we've examined for yes. this coverage? Is there a reason why we don't try to get other quotes for our insurances when, we, when they're up for renewal? Um, we could spend a lot of time on it. This is pretty, this is, uh, it's actually better than it was last year, which is good. Um, uh, it is coming to us recommended by Maya, and they being nonprofit and pro-municipality um, have always gotten us good deals. Um, if we were going to go out, uh, it says a conversation that should start when we're doing the budget in order to get enough time to do that. I mean, uh, the, 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 the other, the other main practices? one in isn't England, VFIS, is, is much more expensive. It's kind of a Cadillac plan for insurance. And um, uh, I, would, I would recommend, yeah, I, I have worked with them before. And they give uh, very good insurance, and it costs a lot of money. So we're not going to get, I mean, and that's the other main insurance provider for Fire IOD. So, Cause, I mean, when, when when this when the Maya question came up, the when the, the that we renewed a month mm -hmm. or two ago or whatever, I remember in a subsequent school committee frontier meeting they had a, a whatever and so I, and it's the the frontier policy that any insurance come from rule there has to be besides the one for renewal there has to be two quotes and two additional quotes and. The, yeah, I, I, well, that's best practice, isn't it? You don't just go with the one that you always had, just like you do with your homeowners or whatever. You pick up the phone and you. Well, again, and, and the policies are all going to be different, and they're all going to tell you they give you advantages. Um, the advantage with, to going with Maya is that they are um, very municipally oriented. That's, that's they ensure at least half of the municipalities in the Commonwealth for this type of thing. Right? And and they and they have their sub arrangements that they make for specialty insurances like this one. Um, so this is like continuing Maya. Um, it is 
it is difficult to compare different policies. It is possible. It is very time consuming. Um, and, you know, again, uh, if we're uh, doing the budget uh, next year, that's about the time to start. We have to give loss histories to all the other companies. Um, and uh, so that's, that's where we are with that. It's, it's not a small task. Uh, for insurance, mainly because of the difference differences in the policies. If we said, you know, we want this coverage from you, that that would be different from the way that they set things up. And they don't itemize each coverage. I mean, I noticed that they don't so itemize. Is this the yeah, but they might coverage? not. Yeah. Um, they might not construct their packages the same way. They might have different loss leaders. You know, that sort of thing. Um, it would probably be entirely possible to have somebody from Maya come out and explain um, the uh, first of all how they do things differently and secondly um, what the uh, the uh, Cabot risk and the Chubb Insurances, how they manage those. Is Chubb the, the dealer? Is, is Chubb the, Chubb's the insurance company? The insurance company? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they have an agreement with Maya uh -huh. to cover Maya's IOD things. Um, you know, that said, we do not get Maya health insurance. We, we have Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust because they've always been good and we never go out to bid other than Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust either. Um, partly because once we get out of that, if we did go out of it, it would be, it could be very difficult to get back in. And they have been very good. So- That's a whole separate- campaign. Well, it's the same, Maya also offers health insurance. We don't do that because we have been getting a better deal. And the only, the, the other major carrier of IOD is the FIS and they're very expensive. They offer much better coverages for a lot more money. Uh, we, we saved, um, I think, $3,000 on this when we switched a while back. I did go out and I got, I got this quote, and it was, we saved $3,000 by moving over to Maya. So that's why we went to this company. Okay. Somebody else could say, yeah, we'll get you a lot better coverage, and it'll only cost $3,000 more. Well. And so this is, over this the last four years, that's twelve thousand, and it keeps racking up. So, other questions? This is police and fire. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Not not for the rest of the town. No. No. Just, just police. It's, and fire. it's injured on duty because they're uh, separate categories. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Twelve thousand six hundred ninety-eight per year. Yeah. Is the premium for how many years? One year. One year. Well, it's for. It covers 36 40 people. people or something, however many yeah. it is. Yeah. 36 people. Yeah. Are we all set then? All right, I'll make a motion that we uh, renew the update application for the Public Safety Protection Plus uh, that comes to us from Maya. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, uh, I'll abstain on this too, I guess. Okay. okay, next item is to appoint uh, Virginia A. Knowlton as town clerk emeritus for term ending June 30th, 2020. Do we have, uh, do we have anything to sign for that? There should be a appointment form. I didn't see one. I will produce one. Hold on. I did ask if anybody else had a better title. 
in my email. Emeritus? And I didn't I like, get I like any that. responses. I like that. Ex officio is actually more, more appropriate than emeritus. Out of the office. <laughs> Out of the office. I, like that. I should have that. I should sign in my name. Do you want to change that title? The, I, I, my opinion is not so strong as to warrant a change, but... Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, it, it's honorary here. It's kind of honorary. Okay, so we can, you know, call it whatever you like. Um, and we do have something to sign. I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion that we appoint um, yeah. Virginia A. Knowlton as town clerk emeritus for term ending June 30th, 2020. Do I have a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Yeah. Okay. All right, next uh, item is to. Um, Authorize our treasurer to sign one line renewal contracts for payroll and tax title software support. Yeah, it's, it's uh, online. And um, the, uh, the trick here is that it's an online application. Okay. And, and so uh, you got the information about um, what that's you know, going to cost and why she's. Um, having to do it this way this time it is a price increase um, but this is this is the software support for the payroll and tax title software that we use right um, thank you um, so that's uh, that's her note you you got a copy of the the agreement itself but it does have to be filled out online so mm -hmm. she uh, rather than um, having you sing it uh, you just talk about what she's talking about the very last sentence yeah um, she's we're in the middle of a conversion process now and as our I don't know, we're in the middle of a, a, a dozen town consortium of people who are undergoing this particular um, process. This also was a community compact grant. Um, uh, but this one, is, I believe Ashburnham is the lead town in it. And um, she, uh, you know, we're, we're getting the job done. We're getting our, our new system in place uh, but Jan is leaving, certainly leaving the door open to uh, uh, some other software support company once we get through this process, because she recognizes that it's you know a seven percent increase in one year is substantial, and uh, but she's recommending that we go, we stay with them for now because we're right in the middle of the conversion process and we don't want to you know screw that up. After a year, she'll be in a better position to assess um, all right you know options all set yep okay I'll make a motion that we give Jan the authorization to sign um, online renewal contracts for payroll and tax title software support do I have a second yeah all in favor yeah okay okay let's see we've got everything else done except the discussion on the land near near road by sheep barn which we're not going to take up tonight yeah it's do you uh, have the virginia thing to decide or is it just discuss you sign? anything for which the virginia yeah, just just, just you okay. yeah, it's just good. it's just a regular yep good yeah um, so we'll, yes uh, uh, no he hasn't he's out he here. hasn't submitted so the he, uh well he's here we, oh he's in the hallway yeah oh so, we have his form. Oh, oh he's he's here. Yeah. Um, I don't have a form. He didn't he didn't come in because we were doing other stuff. But he's in, Tom, he's do you have anything uh, non anticipated forty eight hours in advance? Do you want to uh, take? I I don't. Do we do it that I way? Don't. Do you want to take uh, Mr. Lashevsky? Yeah. Come on in. The world stuff. I, I think so. Unless you have any documents you want to have. I'm going to run. I'll make a copy. 4 o'clock and I just got it half here. Okay. 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 Okay
Oh, it's one of the Yeah, no, that's something you, you're going to get it. Do you have the the application form from before for further work? I don't. No. Okay. Or, or maybe any second. Okay. So that's all set. So um, if you can just give that to me if you okay. want. Um, so that's good. All right. Um, and I don't think we have anything further to discuss right now until you come up with the further estimates. Okay. So, yeah, we're good. When can I uh, pay the electrician for his um, The checks will be cut tomorrow. Okay. So, you need to call Jan in the morning. All right. Or she'll mail it to you. All right. I'll post it. <laughs> yeah. Thank right. you. Okay. Thanks. Have a good night. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Um, no other items. So we're uh, not going to do the the land by the sheep barn. And, you know, no, we need no. more information for that. Okay. You have an update, Tom? Yes, I do. Um, the committee updates uh, parks, recreation, and trails. Uh, that committee has installed a sign on the ball field wall, um, the new wall that, from the Mass Works project, a warning against playing on or climbing the wall. Uh, this has been a suggestion of various residents since the wall was installed and will help in the case of an insurance claim. Mm -hmm. Don't climb on the wall. Um, I believe we have sorted out the issues surrounding the community preservation article at town meeting. Um, the advice I got from the Department of Revenue was to include both a statement of the percentage, for example, 10% for historic preservation, <laughs> and an estimated dollar figure for the following fiscal year. This estimate would then be revised as actual figures became known. So if we state that they're estimated figures, we need dollar figures in the warrant but we can state that they're estimated, and if we use the 10%, we're good to go ahead. Um, and it does come from the following fiscal year, so we know um, how to do that. I've already um, drafted the, the template for next year and stuck it in for that. Uh, the Council on Aging is expecting to have two vacancies as of July, so if anyone wants to be on the Council of Aging, please let us know. Uh, this office, Pat Smith, uh, Pat Lynch, uh, whoever you like. Uh, they are especially looking for members willing to take on tasks. So if you want to actually roll up your sleeves, they're, they're very interested. Okay. In departmental news, uh, the multi-hazard mitigation plan update meeting, originally scheduled for Thursday, May 23rd, has been rescheduled for tomorrow morning. Uh, Wednesday from 9.30 to 11. The highway department is moving the salt shed electrical service per the owner's request, hence the excavation on the side of the road there you may have noticed. This is unrelated to the highway facility project. Do we have any outside expenses on them? Uh, I think we're going to be, well, yes, but I, I think we're within budget. Okay. So that's fine. Good. Uh, it will help with the highway project, too. I mean, that's it's not totally unrelated. <laughs> uh, I referred uh, Mr. Burt's complaint about the noise from Ms. Dufresne's geese to the animal control officer. He's working on it and has met with Mr. Burt and is seeking to meet with Ms. Dufresne, who appears to have only three or so geese. The animal control officer and I agree that even if there is a problem, there's not much the town can do in this dispute between neighbors. We have a few noise items in our bylaws, and none of them seem to apply. Okay. Is, uh, is this considered farming? Uh, Ms. Dufresne is, is saying it is. Mm -hmm. Livestock. Yeah. Um, as mentioned earlier in the meeting, uh, oh yeah, this this goes on with uh, the the Ginny's thing, where she has to be treated as an employee and not an independent contractor. I spoke about that earlier. There was an outbreak of spam emails sent to people using my email address. I'm working with our IT consultant on this, 
but his first impression is that it is virtually impossible to protect against this sort of thing, and that people should simply not click on any links. And uh, I, there wasn't a link, but it did ask you to reply, I think. Maybe there was a link. But yeah, that's, that's it, the installation of the but, malicious. Yeah. But, but I, I think this one was just, you know, reply. You see what's happening like with the cities of Baltimore and Philadelphia um, and D.C. And the, the I, mean, I think the particular one that I'm talking about, I'm not sure that it actually had a link, but uh, it did certainly ask you to reply, and that presumably sent you to somewhere that was not uh, wholesome. So that's uh, ah, okay. that's a wrap-up. Hmm. Okay, thank you, Tom. Any questions for Tom? If somebody, okay. has, if somebody has questions about the Community Preservation Act and whether certain funds are applicable, who are they supposed to call now? Uh, Dusty King is a co-chair, and is uh, Robert Anderson the other co-chair, Robert Anderson? He still is? Yeah. So All right. Dusty King or Robert Andrew, Bob Anderson. All right. That's good. Glad I said Okay, select board comments. Do we have any select board comments? No. Okay. Uh, mail. Have you seen this? Well, no, what is it? Okay, it's from Comcast. It's a new channel lineup oh. update. Yeah, usually I put these things in the mail that can safely be ignored folder, which I do encourage people to go through every time this comes up. Um, yeah, this is standard. So, so this is it includes both things that we've already covered and things that, like this, that are. Um, it's not a new channel lineup. It's a it's a clarification of the existing no, channel. No, lineup. it's an extension. I mean, they're going all up to they're virtually up to two thousand channels now. What? Two thousand channels. Yeah, they're yeah. talking about channels eighteen twenty two. I mean, you yeah, know, I know. I, how, how they do just do assign that? those numbers randomly. Oh, geez, how do you do that? How do you do that many channels? The more channels we have, the worse <laughs> programming gets. Okay. Any announcements? Hmm. No announcements. Okay. Next meeting is scheduled for Monday, June 10th, here at the town office at 6 p.m. Is there any other business to come before the board? Hearing none, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Can we just put